It all began on a bright September Saturday at Jordan-Hare, a new offense designed to give it to Bo, and give it to him they did against southwestern Louisiana. It's hard to imagine a quicker start for a Heisman Trophy candidate. Bo went seven yards for the first score, 47 yards for touchdown number two, And still in the opening quarter, the route was on when number 34 got loose down the right sideline for a 76-yard touchdown. Today's work totaled 290 yards, four TDs, and a general consensus that Bo Jackson was the man to beat for the Heisman. Get in the way. Auburn, to Pat Dye's dismay, rose to the top of the wire surface poles the week of the Southern Miss game. That despite the unsettling situation at quarterback. Jeff Berger, Bobby Walden, and senior Pat Washington were battling for the job, but it seemed no one would step forward. Auburn struggled to a 29-18 victory over Southern Miss, aided by Southern's loss of quarterback Robert Ducksworth in the first half. The Bo Jackson Express rolled along, two touchdowns, 205 yards on 30 carries, but it was a win hardly befitting the number one team in the country. The bubble burst at Knoxville the following week. While Auburn's offense sputtered, the Vols behind Tony Robinson were magnificent. It was 24-0 at the half. In the third quarter, Bo Jackson, secretly nursing an injured knee, took a hard hit and felt pain in the knee. He went to the sideline, later explaining that he took himself out, feeling that a full-speed Brent Fullwood would help the Auburn cause more than he. It didn't play well in the press. It was a serious setback for the Heisman. Auburn battled for some late scores. It ended 38-20. The run for a national championship was all but a memory. With senior quarterback Pat Washington back in the starting role, the Tiger offense revived. Pat threw for 128 yards against Ole Miss. Bo rushed for 240 yards and two touchdowns. Curtis Stewart had 84 yards as his backup. The Auburn defense registered a goose egg. Ole Miss got two first downs on their opening drive and never another. They gained but eight yards rushing, one yard passing. Nine yards total offense on the day. It was 41 to nothing complete and total. Bobby Bowden brought his high-powered Florida State team to Jordan-Hare. Auburn fans, remembering last year's 42-41 shootout at Tallahassee, were ready for another thriller. Well, they were not disappointed. Bo got it started with a 53-yard run in the first quarter. But early in the fourth, Florida State rallied to make it 31-27. It was anybody's football game, but not for long. Tommy Agee slipped through the Seminole interior and raced 68 yards. A moment later, Freddie Wagan took it in on the reverse. For the next half hour, Auburn fans could not believe what they were seeing. Kevin Porter returned a Seminole pass for a touchdown. Brian Smith knocked the ball away from Chip Ferguson and tackled Ron Stallworth, put his name in the Auburn offensive stats with his first ever touchdown. Demetrius Threat capped off an Auburn day, 59-27, over the top 10 Seminoles. Auburn has traditionally found it difficult at Grant Field in Atlanta. This trip was typical. Georgia Tech dominated the first half, leading 14 to seven. Chris Knapp's 23 yard field goal narrowed the lead to four, and that's the way it went to the fourth quarter. It was then that Bo won the game, a 76 yard run, perhaps his most memorable of 1985, leaving the Tech secondary in his wake. It was then a matter of Auburn's improving defense holding off the Yellow Jackets for a hard-won 17-14 victory. Pat Dye's record of never having lost to Tech as a player or coach was preserved. Auburn rarely gets excited about Mississippi State, but they usually manage to turn in a workmanlike day. That's what they did, thumping the Bulldogs 21-9 on a score by Pat Washington to Freddie Wagan and some magnificent punting by Lewis Colbert. The little senior was headed for an All-American year and well-deserved. Auburn and Florida have waged some classic battles. This one ranks among the best. Two powerful teams slugging it out. The Florida defense dedicated to Bo Jackson's destruction and they nearly succeeded. Number 34 was unable to return in the second half after suffering a deep thigh bruise. 
Pat Washington took up the slack, taking the Tigers on a nine-play drive and scoring to make it 10-7 with 13 minutes left in the game. But the gallant Gators would come back, capping a drive with this perfect throw and winning touchdown. In the words of Pat Dye, it was the hardest fought game I've ever seen in college football. The negative press burst full blown the following week. They said Bo lacked courage. Well, it took courage and then some for 34 to even show for East Carolina. He had only 60% use of his bruised thigh. He carried 14 times for 73 yards, but speed and maneuverability were greatly diminished and very obvious. Few teams, if any, have a number two tailback as good as Brent Fullwood. Auburn went to him, and he was ready. 153 yards on just 14 carries, three touchdowns. He would finish the number four rusher in the Southeastern Conference on the year, even in a backup role. Auburn, Georgia is always big, usually for a conference championship. That was a possibility this time, but the overriding issue centered on the Heisman Trophy race. By now, it was believed that Chuck Long had overtaken Bo in the balloting. A mediocre showing on national television on this day, and Bo could forget the Heisman. He answered the critics in a profound way. A 68-yard run that erased a Georgia lead and put the Tigers on their way to a third straight win over the always tough dogs. Freddie Wagan gave Auburn a cushion with this acrobatic touchdown run. From there, the Auburn defense took charge. Georgian Tracy Rocker had 15 tackles, two sacks of the quarterback. The Auburn defense held off the dogs for a 24-10 victory. It may have been the best game ever seen at Legion Field, provided you're an Alabama fan or nonpartisan. It all came down to a frantic fourth quarter. Auburn drove the length of the field. Bo over the top with 7.03 left, and the point after made it 17-16 Auburn. Gene Jeltz got loose on a long touchdown run, giving Alabama the lead back. Auburn then went 70 yards to take a 23-22 lead with 57 seconds to go. It looked good until Van Tiffin hit a 52-yard field goal with no time on the clock. Alabama had defeated Auburn 25-23. This Aggie team is exceptional. Not only did they take the Southwest Conference title outright, they led the league in both offense and defense. The team Auburn will face on New Year's Day bears little resemblance to the team Alabama beat early in the season. The Tide had just won that thriller from Georgia and had an extra week to prepare for A&M. The Aggies were opening the season and on the road. Legion Field was bedlam. They never really got on track. Ten penalties, most of them motion calls and the noise, seal their fate. Craig Turner's TD run in the final two minutes broke up a close game. Alabama won 23 to 10. But from that point on, A&M improved. They slipped only once, losing 20 to 15 to Baylor on the road when they turned the ball over five times. Down the conference stretch run, they became a great team, knocking over conference powers SMU and Arkansas and then routing TCU and Texas to win it going away. The key to the Aggie offense is balance. Lynn Amity has coached some great quarterbacks, and he's coached another one. Kevin Murray has come along to gain all Southwest Conference status. Under Amity, the Aggie offense does a little of everything. Southwest Conference defensive coaches call it the Amityville Horro. A little veer, some eye, wishbone, one back sets, a controlled passing game, and long bombs. The result is near perfect balance of the pass and run. A little over 200 yards per game rushing. The same per game passing. Amity makes you defend everything. It gets confusing. That's when they score a lot of points, as they did in the final two games of the year. 53 against TCU and 42 against the Texas Longhorns, a record. On defense, they're not quite as big, but they are very quick. Two Aggie defenders, by Jackie Sherrill's own admission, are dominant conference players. Strong safety, Domingo Bryant, and inside linebacker, Johnny Holland. Holland had 15 tackles in A&M's destruction of Texas. He's an All-American, and deservedly so. Bryant is the Aggie big play man on defense. He'll block the field goal or sack the quarterback. 
in a key situation.